Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can do image compression in the browser using JavaScript and output the result as a WebP or a JPEG image. So I'll show you how to do that and then I'll talk through your options for sending the result to a server and also showing you how you can initiate the result as an image download for the user so it functions more like a client side image compression app. So I'm going to be working with an image selected from file. So I've already created an input in my markup of type file, and I'm restricting the type of file that can be selected to an image of any type. So that's the value of entering the asterisk wildcard here. And I've already selected this element in JavaScript. Now, when a user selects a file, I want to get that file, but only when the file selection occurs. So to wait for that, I can add an event listener to the input. And the event listener output here is a change event. So the change event occurs every time a new file is selected. And when that occurs, I can find the file on the input element on the files property it's stored there in an array like file list so you can select it just like you would on a regular array so if it's just a single file like in this example then it's going to be at index position zero so now we have the file in javascript now i'm going to be using the html5 canvas api to do the image compression in order to be able to get it in there I need to first of all load the image on an image element and for that I need a URL for the image so I can create one by calling create object URL on URL which exists on the global window object and into there you pass in what it is you want to create a URL to so it accepts blobs and blob like objects Luckily, when you upload a file via an input element, it's automatically of type file, and that is actually a type of blob. So you can just enter the file directly in there. You don't have to convert it to a blob first. So now we've created a URL to the selected image. The next thing to do is to create a new image element. So I'm going to create one here in JavaScript using the image constructor and I'll set the SRC of that to the URL that we've created. Now I have to wait for the image to load before I can use the canvas API. So to do that, you can either add an event listener listening out for a load event on the image or more commonly, you can set the onload property of the image to the value of a function and this function will run when the image has fully loaded. So a first thing that I'm going to do here to check that all the steps so far have worked is to append the hopefully loaded image to the DOM and something else I can do is because this file object is a type of blob it will have a size property so I can get the size of this image in bytes. I'll log that to the console because that will be interesting for later on when we're comparing the original image to a compressed one. So I'll load this flower image here. So you can see the image in its original quality and we know that it's around 30,000 bytes. Okay, so now that the image has loaded and we've checked that step so far are working, I'm going to write this image to a new canvas. So to do that, I need to create a new canvas element because there isn't already one in my HTML. So I save a reference to that as canvas and I also need to get a context for the canvas because you don't actually right to the canvas, you write to the context that you load. So in this case, the context is going to be a standard 
2D context. The next thing you should do here is to set the dimensions of the canvas. So we want those to be the width and the height of the image that's been selected. So I'll set the width first of all. Now you want to use here, if you want it to be the width of the original image, you want to use natural width instead of width. If you set it to width, then if you've got some CSS, like I have up here, it's going to use the width in CSS rather than the original image width. So if you want to compress the original image as it is, then you want to use these measurements. Okay, so now we can actually draw the loaded image to the canvas that I've created. So you draw it onto the context. So the first argument you're passing here is what you want to draw onto it. So that's the image that will now have loaded and then where you want to start drawing on the X and Y axis. So this is in terms of pixels. So the standard way to draw it across the whole canvas in this case, starting in the top left hand corner is to set these two values to zero. And now as far as the compression is concerned is really where the magic happens. So we take the canvas and we call to blob on it, okay? And this is going to accept three arguments. So the first one is going to be a function. And this function is going to have available to it a blob version of the image that we drew to the canvas. And what you can do here with the next arguments is set what type of image you would like to output here to the blob. So your two options are WebP, which is a very efficient way of compressing an image, or you can choose JPEG. And the second argument is a value between zero and one. So if you select one, it's going to be at the quality of the original image. If you select a lower value than that, for example, 0 0.1 would be quite a harsh level of compression. And the result is available to you here as a blob. So just to check everything's working, I'm logging the blob to the console. And let's also take a look at the size of the blob. So we can see how much smaller it is in terms of size than the original. So you see we've got an original size of 30,000 bytes. Once it's compressed to a WebP on a 0 0.1 quality setting, it's only around 5,000 bytes. Okay, so you'd probably like to see the compressed image, not just a blob version of it. So what we need to do again is to create a URL to this blob so that we can then load it in an image element that we can append to the DOM. Now here I'm going to use a slightly different strategy from earlier. I'm going to create a data URL for this blob. So it will function just like a URL, but it will be a string encoded version of the image. So what I did earlier, that is just referencing the file in memory. So it was okay for those purposes. Here, we're going to actually be stringifying the image. And what we get out of that is both a URL and also the image in pure string form, which means when we send it, we have the option to send the image to a server in pure string format. So to create a data URL, you can use the file reader. So I'm creating here a new file reader instance. And then the setting you want for the reading is read as data URL. And this accepts a blob or a blob-like object. Well, okay, we've actually got a blob here. And then you want to wait for the reading to finish. So you want to add an event listener to the newly created file reader. So this function in the second position is going to run when the reading is complete. The result is going to be available on the result property on the file reader. So I'm going to save that as data URL and I'll log the data URL to the console. So I'll select an image again. 
now you see that we've got this very long string being logged to the console, which is actually a type of URL that contains the data within it. So if we sent this to a server, the entire string, we would be sending the image as a string. And you can see it's not quite like a normal URL to an external resource. It starts with data, then the MIME type, which is image forward slash WebP. And then it's letting the browser know that it's in base 64 encoded format. And I can prove it to you. So if I were to copy this entire string and paste it into the navigation of an entirely new browser instance, you see that the image is loaded. So it's not being loaded from some external server. It's actually contained within this image as a string. So you can see how good the compression is to WebP format here. There's not much of a visible quality loss, even though we're using a very harsh compression setting. Okay, so the next thing to do is we don't want to keep having to copy and paste that data URL into a new browser window. It would be nice if we could see both the original and the compressed image in the DOM. So I'm going to do a similar process to last time create a new image element. This time the SRC is going to be the newly created data URL. And then I want to append this element to the DOM. So it's image two. Now, when I select a file, we see the original here and then and then below the compressed version. Now I'll log again the size of the compressed blob to the console because that was useful information for comparison and we'll compare some WebP versus JPEG. In my experience, WebP is much more efficient than JPEG, but let's try it out. Instead of WebP, we'll compress to JPEG. So let's take a look at the bottom image, you can see maybe there's a bit more visible quality loss there. I'll make the setting even harsher. So now the image is very small, only about 5,000 bytes, but you can see that the quality has really taken a hammering here. You probably wouldn't want this appearing on a web page, this quality. Now let's compare that to an image that's been compressed to WebP. So it's around 15,000 bytes, so it's more than the JPEG, but you can see that the image quality has been much better retained. So you'll probably want to play around with that and find the settings that best suit you. Now let's talk about what you can do with the result, starting with how you would send the result to a server, your options for doing that, and then I'll show you how to initiate it as a download on the client side. So you basically got three options. You can send a payload that is a blob. You can send the blob directly, or you can send the data URL, so a pure string, or you can attach either one of those to a form data object and then send the form data object. So to test, I'm going to make a fetch request to a live test API http bin.org forward slash post and to specify to fetch that this is going to be a post request i need to insert an options object in the second position and set the method to post and then the body this is going to be the payload so i just handle the result before i add the payload so first of all this server sends me back a JSON file that basically mirrors back to it what I sent. So I can see what the server sees. So I'm going to convert that from JSON to a JavaScript object using the JSON method. And then I have available to me all that information about what the server received in a JavaScript object. So as I mentioned, the first option is to simply send a blob 
Okay, I need to add a comma after post there, as this is an object. So let's see what happens now when I select file. Now that we have this extra step of sending the result to the server. So I get back this JavaScript object and on the data property, you can see the image that I sent it has been sent back as a data URL. So this particular server is sending it back to me in this form, but I did send a blob. So you could handle that in a different way on the server side. You probably wouldn't want to convert it to a data URL with application or text stream. As I mentioned, you want to set it to type image WebP, but you can see that the server did indeed receive the data and what method you choose here. So whether you choose blob or whether you send it as a pure string, like I'm about to do now, it all depends upon what your server is configured to do. So if you're configuring it yourself, you might want to allow pure string or blob. If you're using a third party API, then you will want to look at the documentation. So I sent this as a pure string, the payload now, and you can see that it's sending it back to me as the data URL that I sent or type image WebP. Okay, so the final option other than blob or data URL is to send it attached to a form data object. So this might seem a little bit verbose, but actually it's quite good practice to send it as part of a form data object because then the data attached to it will be accessible in diverse types of backend programming environments, including PHP. So it really does depend what's going on with your own backend, but form data for this reason is considered to be quite good practice. So you have to set two arguments here. The first one is the data you want to attach. So you could also attach the data URL. I'm going to attach the blob to the form data object here, and you have to give it a key as well. So I'll give it a key of blob, and then you can actually specify here what you'd like to save it as. So it's just a suggestion for the server how it should be saved. So you could say here image.webp, something like that. This third argument is optional, the first two are not. And then the body of the fetch request, you set that to the form data object. Now, when I send it, let's just check that the server receives it okay. So it's now under the files property here. So again, it's there, this time under files. So it's available under the reference blob and you can see it's converted the blob again to a data URL, but this time it's converted it to WebP. So obviously it's more compatible with this particular server if you send it in a form data object than if you send the blob all by itself. So those are your options for sending the result to a server in a post request. What I'm going to do now is to delete all of that code where I was sending it with fetch. I'm going to show you how you can initiate a download of the result so the user can then have the image as a file on their computer. So to do that, you want to create a new anchor element. And to make an anchor element a download element, you want to set the attribute download on it. And you want to set here the value to be the file name that is going to be downloaded under. So I'll call this compressed image.webp. The next thing is to set the URL to the resource to be downloaded. So in this case, it's the data URL. The next thing is to append that to the body of your document. Okay, so now there's this anchor element that's going to download the image from that URL. And to simulate a click, you can call the click method on the anchor element and then you actually don't need the anchor element anymore. Once the download has started, 
so you can remove that afterwards generally consider good practice if you're automating download like we are here so now when i select file it's going to start a download compressed image .webp, and that result there is going to be the compressed image so that's all i've got for you in this video i hope you found it useful if you did please consider hitting the like button down below this video it helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video and if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future don't forget you can subscribe to the channel